Okay, this is the lumbar scan, the lower quadrant scan. And there's sections of this done in standing position, the sitting position, and then some tests in supine, side-lying, and prone. I'm going to walk through the whole thing here, and we'll do it in the lab as well. But I thought it instructive just to do some of this work on camera so you can see the exact components that we'll take Travis through as we do this test. The first piece, obviously, is just observation. And with the observation at this point, we're looking for things that are obvious and that stand out. We're not looking for subtleties, or we're not looking for things that really may not have too much effect on what we're going to be doing later on. So in this case particularly, we're just looking at his general alignment. We can look at the height of the shoulders. We can look at the spine for kyphosis or for any uh, lordosis abnormalities, such as an increase or a decrease, or a rotation, scoliosis, or a significant lateral shift. We can also look at the general height of the pelvis. Also abnormally looking for any skin changes, such as a port wine stain, a, di a, a discoloration, or looking for some changes in the hair patterns if there's a tuft of hair at any particular level, which may indicate some embryological problems such as spina bifida. We'll also look at the level of the iliac crest, being careful to make sure we're not turned off just by the level of the pants. You can also look at the general buttocks to look to see if there's a, a symmetry with creases or any obvious atrophy. The knee creases are something we'll also look at to see that they're present and in the same place. And also look at the Achilles tendon and the general position of the feet to look to see if there's any pronation or supination abnormalities. Again, remembering that we're simply looking for obvious things at this time. The next test I'll do is just ask the patient to do some things which don't require me to touch him. This will give me a good idea of how the patient is moving on their own and what sort of movements they're comfortable doing on their own. I feel if I put my hands on them too early, then my hands are going to affect the way they move, and I want to see as much spontaneous movement as I can. So some general functional tests. The first thing I'll have them do is ask the patient to stand with his feet flat, uh, arms across the chest loosely, and then rotate as far as he can or twist to the left. And then rotate or twist to the right in the same manner, and then back to neutral. And all I'm looking for here is how far can they go. Typically, the shoulders should come around such they're at about a 180 degree angle to the plane we began on, on both sides, and we're looking to see the proportions of movement at the upper spine, middle spine, lower spine, and then through the hip, knee, and ankles. This may give us something to look at later on because this is a very good functional movement. The next thing I'll have the patient do is to stand up on their toes and to stand up on the heels. And then keeping the feet flat, to perform a full squat, and then allowing the patient to squat in a natural function which may have the heels lifting up. Those three movements simply tell us can they get full closed pack in the feet, have they got an available range of dorsiflexion, and have they got good hip, knee, ankle and spine movement to allow them to form, perform a full functional squat. If they can do all of those three things, then we can be pretty sure that they're not going to have any significant dysfunction. What happens often, especially if you have older people or people who are in significant pain, there's no way they'd be able to do any of these tests. As with anything, any examination in physical therapy, we're only going to do those tests that the patient can be able to do given their pain, age, level of disability, etc. If you cannot do a test, we can either modify them to see what they can do, do it up to their limit, or ignore the test altogether and do them later on if need be. It's not necessary to do every test on every patient. You must keep this in mind when you're doing the tests. The next thing I'll have the patient do is I'll have Travis face me. We're going to do some neurological testing, the myotome testing, for the big muscles of the lower extremity, which are very difficult to test in a manual way to break the contraction. So Travis will just rest his hands on mine. And with his left right leg, I'm going to have him squat on that right leg 10 times. If he can perform a right leg squat 10 times to the full range, then we can be pretty sure that his quadriceps aren't lacking in neurological function. Eight, mm -hmm. nine. And then we'll have him do the same thing on the left. Balance is not important here. Strength is what's important. We're not looking at anything other than the ability of his myotomes to recruit fully at this point. 
and that will cover the L3 myotome extremely well. The other test that we want to make sure we do in standing is the gastrocnemius soleus, so the S1 complex, because that again is very difficult to test in a supinal prone position. So I have the patient stand up on the toes and go up and down 10 times. And on the left, and again we're simply looking to make sure he maintains that full range of motion for all 10 occasions. For a young, fit, healthy person, 10 times should not present any issues. If there's pain or if the patient's incapable of doing this period, which means they're weak on every occasion from the first, we can do these in a normal weight bearing position. Maybe you face the front. All that's left in the standing position now is to go through flexion, extension, and side flexion with a little bit of overpressure and resistance to get an idea of the patient's general range of motion. So I'll ask Travis to flex to his full range of motion. I can then add some general overpressure and ask him to very gently resist me and allow him to come up. And the same will be performed into extension. And then not much overpressure here, but a very gentle resistance forward. And allow him to stand. I would generally stand behind the patient to do this, to watch for deviations, but that would block the camera. Not useful. I'm going to have uh, Travis side bend to the left by letting his arm drop down to the side. A little bit of resistance and overpressure. And we'll repeat the same thing to the right side little bit of overpressure and resistance. At this point, these are very general movement tests. We're not looking to find out very specific movements. We're simply looking to see, can they get through the full range of motion of the, at this point? If they can, that allows us to rule out many problems with the spine and decrease the level of irritability that we can see. I do not typically repeat tests at this point in terms of doing repeated movements. I typically do not do sustained movements at this point. I prefer to get through the full scan and come back to that later on if necessary. If the patient does, however, produce some pain, I will consider doing repeated movements and sustained movements at that point simply because I want to see what effect those have. If a patient, for example, flexes and has pain at end range of motion, it can be very interesting at that point to see if repeated movements decrease the pain or make it better or alternatively make it the same. The overpressure and the re restricted the resisted contractions can also help give us some of that information. The last test I'll do in standing is a simple compression test, which again, I would normally do directly behind the patient, but in this case, I will do it from the side. And we're just applying some gentle compression down through the shoulders here, and we're looking to see the reaction of the lumbar spine. A stable spine and a comfortable spine will stand still. It will not move or buckle or change. There'll be very little reaction to the pressure as there is here in the case of Travis. In someone with an uncomfortable spine and perhaps some musculoskeletal dysfunction or instability or even hypermobility, when I press down in this manner, there can be a buckling in the spine and there'll be a little segment where you see some buckling. This can be something to file away for later for the biomechanical exam to focus in on that area. And that would complete the activities done in the standing position for this scan. It, the, we may see in a positive test some, compre some compression, some buckling at a specific segment, and that is something that we'd want to file away for use when we do the biomechanical exam so we can focus in with our stability testing. And that completes the portion of the exam performed in standing. We would now go to sitting. The reason I go from the different activities through the functional progression is simply so that we don't have to continue getting from standing to sitting to sitting to standing to lying. It's nice and easy to flow through. So we'll now go to sitting position.